Good morning, students. Today we take up another interesting topic, and that is tropical desert region. In this, as usual, we are going to focus on location, climate, vegetation, and human adaptation. So let us continue with the lesson. As far as the tropical desert region is concerned, from the map. we can see that it extends from approximately 15 degree north to 30 degree north in the northern hemisphere and 15 degree south to 30 degree south in the southern hemisphere as these deserts lay astride to the tropic of cancer and to the tropic of capricorn therefore they are known as tropical deserts astride means extending around so since they extend around the tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn so they are known as the tropical desert the tropical deserts of the northern hemisphere includes the sahara which is the largest desert in the world extending from the red sea to the atlantic ocean it is nearly 5500 kilometers from its east to west extent and about 2000 kilometers from north to south it includes countries like egypt Libya, Algeria, Mali, Chad, Sudan and Niger. The Sahara Desert covers a very large part of the northern part of Africa. In fact, it is so large that it is considered to be even larger than that of united states of america now this desert because it is lying in an area where in the eastern part there is a large landmass so the winds which are coming from here are not able to bring enough moisture the sahara deserts desert extends into asia as the arabian desert which is found over here and here it extends from the sinai peninsula which is right near the mouth of the red sea that is to the north northern parts or northern end of the red sea it includes the sinai desert the arabian desert the syrian desert the mesopotamian desert that is present iraq then it extends to iran as the iranian deserts desert ending as the thar desert which is found in a considerable part of india and pakistan in north america the desert extends over california arizona the nevada states of usa and it joins the mexican deserts to the desert to the south in africa there are two deserts that is namib desert and the kalahari which are considered to be comparatively smaller desert and it covers areas of botswana namibia angola and parts of south africa in south america we have the peruvian desert or it is better known as the atacama desert is found in the northern part of chile In Australia we have the Great Australian Desert which lies in the central and western part of 
Australia. It is the second largest desert in the world. It covers nearly 40% of the area of the continent of Australia. So whatever I have just now spoken, it's very clearly written in this slide. Now, why tropical deserts are confined to the western margins of the continents? Let us learn about this aspect in detail. Now, if we look at the trade winds, we find that though the trade winds, that is the northeast trades and the southeast trades, though they are blowing over vast expanses of water, they are highly moisture laden, but they mostly drop the moisture in the eastern margins of the continents. As a result, by the time they reach the western margins, they are almost deprived of moisture. That is why most of the deserts are found in the western margins of the continent. Besides this, it has also been found that the western margins of the continents have high mountains which block the moisture laden winds. So the winds drop moisture in the eastern parts of the mountains or in the windward side whereas the western parts remain dry. Here we can see how the Atacama desert lies in the lee side of the Andes in South America. So here we have the Andes and the Atacama lies in the lee side of the Andes. As a result, the winds coming from here are not able to cross the mountains and hence this area becomes a very dry area. The same thing happens with the Sonoran or the Arizona desert. They lie in the lee side of the Rockies and hence remain a desert. The Rockies of the North America act as a barrier to the rain-bearing winds coming from the Pacific and hence the lee side of the mountains become a desert. So here we can see how the winds which are coming from the Pacific are unable to reach the lee side and this has led to the rain shadow area which is very very dry leading to the occurrence of the Arizona and the Sonoran Desert, one of the most dry deserts of the world. Besides this, there is another very significant aspect which has led to the formation of deserts. Practically every desert has a cold current flowing on its western side. Let's start from the Californian current. Now this is a cold current and winds which are blowing over the cold current are dry winds. So they are unable to bring moisture in this particular region. Similarly, in South America near Atacama, we have the Peruvian or the Humboldt current. So winds are becoming dry, unable to bring enough moisture. The Canary Current in the western part of the Sahara, the Bangula Current in the western part of Kalahari and the Namib Desert, the West Australian Current in the western part of Australia are, are all cold currents which do not allow the adjoining region to get moisture and this has led to the formation of deserts. Now let us learn about the desert climate. Now the deserts have mainly a hot and dry climate. These areas receive very less rainfall to the tune of nearly less than 25 centimeters. The highest temperatures on the earth are recorded in the hot deserts. Temperature on the basis of its distribution, there are two distinct seasons, summers 
are extremely hot. The average temperature can range between 30 to 40 degrees centigrade. Sometimes it can even cross 50 degrees centigrade. Al Azizia in Libya has recorded 58 degrees centigrade, one of the highest. Winters, temperature ranges between 15 degrees centigrade to 25 degrees, but never falls below 10 degrees. There is a great variation between summer and winter temperature. The clear cloudless skies, intense insulation raises the temperature rapidly. The sand absorbs the insulation very fast but releases the e heat equally fast. Thus, the nights become very cold leading to a rapid drop of temperature. The temperature during the night can become or it can drop to below freezing point also. The hot deserts lie in a region where the air descends. As a result, there is no moisture, so possibility of rainfall is very less. The rainfall is not only scanty, but also highly unreliable. The trades are also offshore, thus they do not bring enough moisture. However, Sometimes due to local heating and convectional ascent of air, torrential downpours with thunderstorms occur causing flash floods. Flash floods are a sudden torrential rain which creates a flood-like situation in the desert. You'll be very surprised to know that people who are living in the desert do not die of the heat but they die of drowning. This is something very, very strange. Yet true. The Atacama Desert is the driest desert in the world. This aridity proves to be favorable for the preservation of nitrate deposits. Now, vegetation, a place where there is a very hot and dry climate, a very scanty rainfall. We cannot expect a lot of vegetation, but there is a lot of vegetation found in the desert. Let us see how. Um, though the vegetation is very scanty, sparse and of a bushy nature, yet there are abundance of vegetation in many parts of the deserts. Vegetation mainly consists of xerophytes, which can tolerate extreme arid conditions. Thorny scrubs like cactus can grow in any kind of soil because they all are drought resistant. They have long roots to trap water from great depths. Thick stems enable them to store moisture. Leaves are reduced to thorns to restrict evapo transpiration. Waxy leaves also cuts down transpiration. Waxy leaves are those leaves which have a coat of wax like uh, touch and that does not allow transpiration to occur very fast. Some xerophytes have shallow spreaded roots to trap the water which is found near the surface. Most of the vegetation remain dormant during the dry season, but they start their cycle after an occasional shower. Date palms may flourish near the oasis where groundwater occurs close to the surface. Elsewhere we find that some plants emit very bad odor so that they are not eaten by animals. Some other plants have been found to be very poisonous, highly toxic. So these are some of the mechanism which is adopted by the plants in order to survive in the hot dry deserts and continue with their progeny. Here you can see a few important and very commonly found desert plants and trees. They include acacia, desert rose, prickly pear, 
baboon which are a common sight in the desert areas besides this there are several flowering plants uh, kika date palms which are found in some areas the word desert means barren uninhabited and often a sandy area life in the desert is extremely difficult the hot dry climate aridity of desert does not favor human settlements the average density of the population is hence very less to the tune of about 1 person per square kilometer the desert dwellers are mostly nomads migrating from place to place in search of pastures and water for their animals the tribal do food gathering and hunting because that is their major occupation here you can see bushmen of the kalahari desert aborigines of australia so such people are living in the desert and they have adopted the lifestyle a very simple lifestyle because the means of surviving is very few yet they continue to have a life in the desert areas the oasis where availability of ground water makes conditions more hospitable people have permanent settlements and they also carry on with agriculture so here you can see an oasis amidst the sandy desert where a lot of greenery can be seen along with a lot of settlements now this is the picture of the nile valley uh, which is densely populated due to fertile silt deposited by the nile river irrigation is also being done because of the presence of water throughout the year people have settled over here and they continue with agriculture as their main occupation the gulf countries around persian gulf in asia have rich petroleum deposits these areas have large density of population areas rich in minerals have changed the lifestyle of people over there so we come to the end of the lesson that is tropical deserts i hope you have enjoyed the journey with me in this chapter so that is what we have enough time for today thank you